الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفاء أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن يكسب اسما فإنما يكسبه على نفسه وكان الله عليما حكيما ومن يكسب خطيئة أو اسما ثم يرم به بريئا ومن ثم يرم به بريئا فقد احتمل بهتانا واسما مبينا صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم انس وحشتنا في قبورنا وارحمنا بالقران العظيم اللهم اجعله لنا اماما ونورا وهدى ورحمه اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته انا الليل وانا النهار واجعله لنا حجة يا رب العالمين امين Dear brothers and sisters and sons and daughters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As you must have noted, we are starting our study today from ayah number 111 of Surah An-Nisa. Just to have a brief review, I told you that there, these ayat can be grouped regarding different addresses. In Surah An-Nisa, in some passages, the address is directed towards the Muslims positively, giving them the details of Sharia, giving them how to reform the society now, now that it is your own society, you have your own society at Medina, you have the political authority here, now you can enforce your own laws, now you can reform this society in your own methods, in your own ways. Secondly, the address to the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians. Thirdly, the address towards the Munafiqeen. The most important element now at Medina was that of Munafiqeen because it was the hidden enemy of the Muslims. And they had become a menace to the Muslim society and this, you know, budding Islamic state, we may call it. Although there is no address to them directly by the words, Ya Ayyuhal Munafiqoon, you will never find this word in the Quran. Always they are also addressed, Ya Ayyuhal Lazina Amanu. Why? Because they profess to be Muslims. Legally they were Muslims. So they are also addressed by the words, Ya Ayyuhal Lazina Amanu. But when we see to the contents of the ayah, then we can understand, here actually, the address is to the Munafiqeen. But then secondly, these three addresses, they are interspersed with each other. To review the first 43 ayat, they were positive instructions to the Muslims, how to reform the society, what is the law of inheritance, how to protect the rights of women, how to protect the rights of orphans, etc., etc., how to have a sex discipline in your society, how to finish with the sex anarchy. All these things came in the ayat, in the beginning, 43 ayat. Then there was a brief reference to the people of the book from ayat number 44 to ayat number 57. Then two very profound ayat, again positively towards the Muslims, given the basis of the Islamic state how to conduct the affairs of the Islamic State. Ya ayyuhal lazeen amanu ati'u Allah wa ati'u rasoola wa awli al-amri minkum fa in talaza'atum fi shayin farudduhu ila Allah wa al-rasool in kuntum tu'minuna billahi wal yawmi al-akhir zalika khairun wa ahsanu ta'wila And after that starts a very long discourse starting from ayah number 60 and it will end up in the ayah number 115. It's a continuous address to munafiqeen. And three subjects are discussed regarding them. Number one, total obedience 
to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That is essential. If you profess to be Muslims, you have to obey him in all respects, even all personal disputes that may arise between you. You have to accept him as the arbiter. You have to accept him as the judge. فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُونَ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمًا But this is why this was very you know very difficult for them to swallow a very bitter pill to swallow for the munafiqeen. He is also a man, human being. Why should we be obedient to him? We are ready to obey Allah, but why should we be obedient to him? You know the same disease which today we have among the people who don't want to accept ahadis who don't want to accept sunnah as the permanent source of islamic law they say hey, the quran is sufficient for us we don't need anything else the same disease is appearing among the muslims in this form that was the attitude of the munafiqeen on or madina we are not ready to obey, obey muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we are ready to obey allah allah's word secondly Qital fi sabirillah had become a very big burden for them, risking their lives, going out to fight the enemies of Allah, risking their lives, spending their money and wealth and belongings. So we had a long discourse about that. Thirdly, and it was this concerned basically the munafiqeen not of Madina, but munafiqeen at Bakka, munafiqeen in other tribes. For them, hijra had been made obligatory. It was fard. You have to migrate to Medina now, and I told you the wisdom behind it. That now, because an offensive had to be taken against the Ahmad al Kufr, the leaders of Kufr, they were in Mecca, the Quraysh, and you know, for that offensive, all the human resources that were available should have gathered at one place, at the base, so that an effective offensive could be launched from there. When Muslims were scattered, some are here, some are there, some are in that uh, tribe, some are living in that tribe, in that corner of Arabian Peninsula. So how could you know that force be available, which was required for an effective offensive? So hijrah was made compulsory, obligatory, and it has also become a reason for munafiqeen, you know, because they were hesitating to leave their hearts and homes and families and the places where they were born. Where they were brought up, where their ancestors, you know, they were they lay buried. Actually, it was very hard to do it. So these three things have been discussed, you know, in detail is in this passage. Now we are in the middle of that. Waman yaksib isman fa inna ma yaksibuhu ala nafsi. It's again a universal law. Whosoever earns a sin, verily he earns it against himself. You know this iman bil akhirah, this faith in hereafter. It changes the outlook of human beings absolutely. I have done something wrong to him. Well, actually, I have done something wrong to myself because I will have to bear the punishment for that in the hereafter, which is the real life. Wa inna dar al akhirat al hayal hayawan lo kanu yalamur. So the outlook is absolutely changed. You have not done anything wrong to him. You have done something wrong to your own self, your own soul. You have doomed your own self. Waman yaksib isman fa inna ma yaksibuhu ala nafsi. Wa kana Allahu alim al hakima. And Allah is ever knowing, all wise. Waman yaksib khatiyatan. And there is the second grade, you know, a higher level of this sin. And what is that? Waman yaksib khatiyatan aw isman. Whosoever earns a sin or some other wrong deed, summa yarme behi bariyan, and then he casts the blame on somebody else who is innocent. I do something and put the blame on him. He has done it. Now this is a crime of a higher degree. Fakadeh tamala bohtanam wa isman azima, isman mubina. But such a person has taken upon himself the burden, a very heavy burden, of false charge, false allegation, and a very clear and manifest sin. So these are two ayat, you know, 
and they have they have something common between them in in the subject and there is an incident in the background a munafiq who was a muslim he committed a theft then he put the blame on a jew they knew because you know these jews are weak we are strong our tribes are strong us and khadraj and you know because us and khadraj are mainly muslims so i will get the support of the muslim society and i will go scot free and this jew will be blamed for this theft but when it was investigated he was found to be guilty himself but now his relatives came and they took his side no 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 he is he is our brother he is a muslim he must not be punished so it become became a hard issue for muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know these things are practical examples you know to run the affairs of a state is not an easy job you have to look to the right to the left but you know because muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the prophet of allah so he decided rightly and he gave the punishment to the muslim although he was a legal muslim so that is the incident man yaksib isman fa inma yaksibuhu ala nafsi first of all he committed theft and he took the burden of his sin on him and to add fuel to fire wa man yaksib khatiyatan aw isman summa yarmi bihi bariyan faqad ihtabala buhtan wa iswa mubina wa laula fadlullah alayka wa rahmatuhu and oh muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had there not been the grace of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bounty upon you la hamma taifatun minhum a group amongst these had tried and intended an yudilluk to lead you astray to lead you on the wrong path to lead you to the injustice wa ma yudilluna illa anfusahum but because allah is with you they can't take you to the right to the wrong path but they are actually they have taken themselves to the wrong path they have taken the ism and the, they have taken the burden on themselves wama yadruna min shay and they will ne- never be able to harm you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah is your protector wa anzal allah alayka al kitab wal hikmata and this is one of the manifestations of allah's bounty on you that anzal allah alayka al kitab wal hikma allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down the book and the wisdom on you wa allamaka ma lam takun ta'lam and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught you what you what you didn't know before wa kana fadlullah alayka azima and you know the bounty of allah on you is very great sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la khaira fi kasirin min najwahum there's no good in most of their secret parleys and secret talks najwa two three persons going away and talking to each other this is called najwa you should say out what have you have to say in the in the open but you know groupings then intrigues then sitting in different corners and then you know they are talking to each other this is called najwa la khaira fi kasirin min najwa in these secret meetings and secret negotiations and secret you know parleys and secret talks most of them were without any good illa but there is an exception illa man amara bi sadaqatin except for for the, that person who who commands someone to give something in charity now to ask in public is not good if you persuade in private Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you wealth. You should, you know, spare something for the cause of Allah, for the cause of the poor. So if you are doing this job privately and separately, then it is good. One exception. Illa man amar abhi sadaqatin aw marufin. Or any other good advice is being given. Personal advice. If you advise a person in public, maybe he feels offended. He thinks himself to be superior to me. so he is advising me but if you privately go and tell him that this is better for you and this attitude that you have taken is not good it would have been much better had you taken that attitude so that is also an exception how islahim bainan nas and the third is when you are trying to bring some reconciliation between two parties there also you are required to talk to them separately then come to the other party and talk to them separately 
So these are the three exceptions. All other secret negotiations are without any good. لا خير في كثير من نجواهم إلا من أمر بصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس ومن يفعل ذلك Whosoever does these three things or one of these three things ابتغاء مرضات الله and in doing these things actually he wants the pleasure of Allah سبحانه وتعالى that Allah be pleased with me فصوف النوطيه أجر عظيما to such a person or to such persons we shall give a very big reward وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولِ Now this is the last ayah of this passage. We started from ayah number 60. In which you know actually, indirectly, the munafiqeen are being addressed. These all, you know, diseases which have been considered and discussed here, they were in the munafiqeen. وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ Whosoever becomes hostile towards the messenger of Allah. That was the last stage, you know, because just as you know, TB, tuberculosis, had three stages. First stage, second stage, third stage. And when, you know, somebody had gone to the third stage of tuberculosis, you know, then it was thought now it is incurable. The same way, you know, Nifaq, first stage is telling lies, making lame excuses. Second stage is, now you are swearing by Allah. Wallah, I wanted to go. Actually, there was this reason I couldn't go to the, to the battle. And third is, you feel enmity for the Muslims and especially for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had put us in this difficult position because he has started this movement. And by this movement, now there is a conflict in Arabia. Now there is wars are going and we are required to go to fight. And this is actually all due to him. So there was personal enmity towards Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hearts of the munafiqeen. An enmity towards the Muslims, good Muslims, why? Well, they are always ready to go. Whenever there is a call, they respond positively. They don't look to the right or the, ra to the left. They don't see what are the risks involved. And they are ready to sacrifice everything. So actually, because they respond positively to every call, we become prominent because we are not responding positively. So actually they are to blame. So these are the two reasons of shikaq. And this is the highest level of nifaq. And when nifaq reaches this level, it becomes incurable. وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى Whosoever becomes hostile to the messenger of Allah, after the guidance has been made manifest and evident, now it was, you know, at least 17 years had passed from the beginning of Wahi. Most of the Quran had been revealed. All the guidance has, has come to you already. When all this guidance has come to you, and even now if you are hostile to the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And whosoever is following, not the way of the Muslims. The way of the Muslim is, when they are called, they say labbaik. When they are called to spend, they bring everything they have and contribute. This is the way of the Muslims. So actually, whosoever is hostile to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and who is, whosoever is not following the way of the mu'mineen, nuvallahi ma tawalla. We also turn him, turn him in the direction in which, which he has himself chosen. He has chosen the direction of hell. Well, hell to you. Go. Now we don't care for him. Now we don't want to bring him back. Now he has taken this direction. He has reached that level of nifaq. Let him go to hell. And we shall throw him in Jahannam. Wasat Masira. And it's a very bad destination. So this is the final, you know, in this long passage starting from ayah number 60. And it has come to ayah number 115. It has been discussing all, all this passage discusses actually nifaq and munafiqeen and the various diseases in them and the various forms of manifestation of nifaq. But this ayah is important in another way also. And that is, you know, it is the basis of the authenticity of ijma in Islam. You know, the sources of Islamic law are number one, Quran. 
سورسز آف شریعہ قرآن نمبر ون سننا آف دی پروفٹ نمبر ٹو یعنی اجماع نمبر تھری اجماع آف دی ڈیز آف دی پروفٹ اجماع آف دی ڈیز آف دی کمپینینز اجماع آف دی پیریڈ آف خلافت راشدہ ناؤ دس ہیز بین ایکسیپٹیڈ بائی آل فور اسکول آف فق امنگ دا سنیز انفی مالکی شافی حمبلی دے آل ایکسیپٹ جما از دی تھرڈ سورس آف لا ان اسلامک شریعہ بٹ امام شافی سیز آئی ونڈرڈ اف اجما از سو امپورٹنٹ وائی دیر از نو مینشن آف اٹ ان قرآن اینڈ امام شافی از اے بگ اسکالر اینڈ ہی از ایکچولی دی فاؤنڈر آف دیٹ ڈسپلن آف اصول الفق دس ڈسپلن اسٹارٹیڈ ود امام شافی رحم اللہ سو ہی سیز that i read i went through quran 300 times only to find any place which, to which i can point out that this is the basis of ijma 300 times i didn't find anything but now on the 301st chance my eyes you know stopped here here is the place of ijma sabil al mu'minin the way of the moments the way of the believers it becomes authentic by itself and this is the ijma wa man yashaqiq ar rasul min ba'd ma tabayyana lahu al huda wa yattabi ghayra sabil al mu'minin nuwallahi ma tawalla wa nuslihi jahannam wa saat nasira now again to the muslims but this can again be divided in two parts a and that is regarding shirk and the pagan background after all all the muslims you know in that society they belong to and their ancestors were the worshippers of idols etc etc so maybe there is some some of those past influences and traditions present in some of them if not all of them in some of them there can be some traces some you know some effect of that background So here also we find in a very brief passage, it appears to be as if we are reading some Makki ayat, this, this portion. Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bi, wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalik aliman yasha. First of all, and this ayat, these words are appearing for the second time now in this very surah. Allah Ta'ala is never going to pardon and forgive this sin of shirk. that something or somebody be associated with him as a partner or as equal this is the biggest sin biggest crime unpardonable inna allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bi wa yaghfiru ma duna zalika liman yasha whatever is lesser and smaller than this it can be hoped that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will condone it but it is not an open license that you go on doing everything else except shirk and it is licensed to you and it is ensured for you that allah will forgive it no but but it can be hoped wa yaghfiru ma duna zalika liman yasha not for all for whomsoever he wills he pleases wa man yushrik billahi faqad dalla dalalan ba'ida and verily who commits shirk with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala associates anything or anybody with him as partner or equal well he has gone astray and he has gone very far off deviated very far off from the right path in yaduna min dunahi illa inasa now that was the shirk of the pagan arabs they you know had female deities their goddesses lat female muannas uzza uzza is the feminine of al aziz al uzza al aziz al akbar al kubra in the same way al aziz al uzza Lat, Manat, Uzza, these were the female deities. In Yaduna, Mindunahi, Illa, Inasa. They are not praying to or worshipping besides Allah, but female deities. They are goddesses. In Yaduna, Illa, Shaitanam, Marida. This is only apparently that they are calling and praying, you know, and invoking Lat or Manat or Uzza. Actually, they are calling and praying to Shaitan. The Shaitan. who is the rebel against allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually it is shaitan who is being addressed la'nahu allah 
اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ ہیڈ کرسٹ ہم وقال اللہ تخد النم نباد کا نصیب مفروضہ اینڈ ہی آلسو ہیڈ سیڈ اٹ ان اے چیلنجنگ موڈ او اللہ آئی شیل پروو ٹو یو اینڈ آئی شیل ٹیک اے شیئر فرام یور دیز کریچرز یور مین دیز ہیومن بینگ نصیب مفروضہ اے پارٹ اے پورشن وچ از اپوائنٹیڈ اینڈ اینڈ ایبسولیوٹلی کلیئر آئی ول گیٹ دم ولا ادل ولا ادل نہم آئی ول لیڈ دم اسٹری ولا امن نہم آئی ول انگیج دم ان وین ہوپس ان وش فل تھنکنگ او اللہ از باؤنٹی فل ہی ول فار گیو سو یو فارو لنا وی ول بی پارڈن لن تم صلی نار اللہ یام معدودات دی فائر آف ہیل ول ناٹ بی ایبل ٹو ٹچ اس ایکسیپٹ فار اونلی اے فیو ڈیز دیز آر دی امانی Nobody touch to touch to them. Just we find in Hindu society also, even today, we find that the cattle are, you know, roaming. Nobody can stop them because they have been donated to in the name of some, you know, Devata and some God, etc., etc. And, we sh- and I shall command them and they will alter the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now we are playing with this creation of Allah. with genetics and genetical engineering we will be playing havoc with the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this has started and the other form was females imitating males males imitating females wala yughayyirunna khalq allah allah has made them something else allah had made these hair grow on males we shave it no we we, we want to look like females This is also a change in the khalq of Allah. This is nature, going against nature. Why? The sunnah of the prophets, all the prophets, all the messengers of Allah, and we are imitating this West. Why? This is again, you know, changing. Because the fitrah, Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. All these things, you know, fitrah is that which was given to us through Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. So this is changing. And unisex dress. Somebody is going and you can't say whether he is a male or she is a female. You can't know. So all these things, you know, they, they belong to this category. And this is going to its climax through this genetical engineering. وَلَعَمُرَنَّهُمْ فَلَا يَغَيِّرُنَّ خَلْقَ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يَتَخِذْ شَيْطَانَ وَلِيًّا مِّن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ خَسِرَ خُسْرَانَ مُبِينَ And whosoever takes Satan as his protector and friend instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Oh, he is in a great loss, in a manifest loss. He has lost his career, his future. Ya'iduhum. This Satan promises them, although his promises are false. Wa'yumannihim. And engages them in vain hopes, in wishful thinking. Wa'ma ya'iduhumu shaitanu illa gurura. But whatever the shaitan, the Satan is promising to them, is nothing but delusion and deception ulaika ma wahum jahannam wala yajiduna anha mahisa for all these the abode is hell and they will not find any way out of it once thrown in it they will have no escape no way out of it and on the contrast as i told you wherever there is mention of the people of the hell then now people who are going to paradise وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ As for those who have real belief, real iman, وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And what's the proof of their real belief? That is the عَمَلُوا الصَّالِحِ Their deeds are good. سَنُدْخِلُوهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَعْتِ الْأَنْهَارِ Soon we are going to make them enter the gardens underneath which rivers will be flowing. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا And they will abide there, they will live there forever, forever. وَعَدَ اللَّهِ حَقًّا 
a true promise from allah subhanahu wa taala don't have don't harbor any doubts in your mind it's a promise from allah and you know it's a true promise waman asdaqu min allah qila who can be more true in his saying than allah subhanahu wa taala himself so have full confidence that if you are fulfilling these two conditions of iman and amal salih then allah subhanahu wa taala will fulfill his promise and he is asdaqu qila laysa bi amaniyakum now this word again appears here amani what is amani wishful thinking well we belong to the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we shall have the intercession we shall all be saved we shall go directly to heaven directly to paradise well where has it been guaranteed in the quran could you tell me please but this is amani lan tamassana naru illa ayyama ma'dudat where in torah have we given you that guarantee could you tell us no it's your amani your wishful thinking nahnu abnaullahi wa ahibahu we are like sons to allah we are very loved by allah subhanahu wa taala we are beloveds of allah has he said it so in any of his books no it's amani laysa bi amani yakum o muslims Beware! Nothing will be decided according to your wishful thinking. Wala amani ahlil kitab, nor the amani of ahlil kitab. These amanis, these umniyats, these wishful thinkings, these false beliefs that you have concocted yourselves. May amal su ay yujza bi. Whosoever commits something wrong, something bad, something ill and evil, he will be recompensed for that. This is the law. There is no exception to this law. Wala yajid lahu min dooni Allah waliyam wala nasira, and he will never find against the judgment of Allah, against the accountability of Allah, anybody to protect and anybody to help. No protection, no help. If you have done wrong, you'll have to face it. Man yamal suwan yujza bi, wala yajid lahu min dun Allah waliyam wala nasira. And again, here contrast as for the Muslims, wa man yamal min al-salihat, whosoever is doing good deeds, virtuous acts, min zakari na unsa, irrespective of whether he is a male or she is a female, wa huwa mu'min. But the condition is that she or he must be a mu'min. Good deeds there can be in the unbelievers also. They they can also found charitable institutions. They might they might be doing something good for the humanity. But if they don't believe in Allah, if they don't believe in Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, if they don't believe in the hereafter, when that good deeds and charities are going to be no good to them in the hereafter. So that is the condition. But whether he is a male or she is a female, it is, it is irrelevant. Waman yamal bin salihat min zakarin wa unsa wa huwa mu'minun fa ulai ka yad khulun al jannah. These people will enter paradise, heaven. La yuzlamu na nakira, and they will not be wronged, even equal to the speck of a dead stone. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ دِيمًا مِمَنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ And who can be better in religion than the one who submits his face to Allah? And because this face is the most respectable part of our body. What does it mean? He has submitted his whole self before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Face actually is the most important part of human body. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ دِينًا مِمَنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ Now here, most of the translators I find, they have committed a mistake. Muhsin here is not meant doing good to others. This is the higher level of Islam. Islam, Iman, Ihsan. Very fine level of Islam. Subtle level. High level. Where it is become Ihsan. as we find in hadith jibril which is called umm sunnah first question what is islam number 2 what is iman number 3 what is ihsan wallahu yuhibbul muhsinin 
when you know his religion becomes very fine very beautiful his character is very admirable when he's praying from the depths of his heart when he's loving allah the most from the depths of his heart what is ihsan and the prophet replied anta budallaha kana ka tarahu fa illam takun tarahu fa innahu yarak that you obey allah you worship allah as if you are seeing him or at least if you are not seeing him at least you should have the feeling that he is seeing you fa illam takun tarahu fa innahu yarak this is ihsan فَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ دِينًا مِمَّنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجَهُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ اتَّبَعَ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا And he follows the millah, the method, and the way of Ibrahim. And Ibrahim was an upright person, absolutely pure in faith. حَنِيف يَكْسُو Upright and pure faith. وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had taken ibrahim as a friend now this is the highest degree allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking of ibrahim as khalil khullah in arabic means very deep love khalil you know it's much higher than rafiq rafiq is a you know you may call rafiq a colleague or a comrade these things are you know at the level of rafiq but you know khalil and let me quote here one saying of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that can give you a something you know what what khalil is in arabic the prophet said la kuntu muttakhidan khalilan la takhastu aba bakrin khalila if i could take anybody as khalil for me i would have taken abu bakr even abu bakr didn't reach that level لو كنت متخذا خليلا لاتخذت ابا بكر خليلا سو خليل از ويري هاي ليفل واتخذ الله ابراهيم خليلا هيز ابو الانبياء ذا فور فادر اوف هندريدز اوف بروفيتس اول ذا بروفيتس اوف ذا اولد تيستامنت هو ار ذي ذا بروجيني اوف ابراهيم ثرو اسحاق اند ذن ذا فاينل and complete messenger of allah subhanahu wa taala ar rasulul kamil muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam again the son of ibrahim through ismail inni ja'iluka lin nas imama that was one dimension inni ja'iluka lin nas imama and here what takhad allah ibrahim khalila in relation to the humanity you are imam in relation to me you are my khalil and in relation to the messengers of allah and prophets you are the father of so many prophets and messengers of allah that is the position of ibrahim that is why you know we invoke in durood in salah allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammadin kama sallaita ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim innaka hamidum majid allahumma barik ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammadin kama barakta ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim innaka hamidum majid وللله ما في السماوات وما في الارض and to allah belongs all that is in the heavens and that is in the earth wa kana allah bi kulli shay'in muhita and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is encompassing all the things he is he has encircled as if everything nothing is beyond his control now the second part of this address to muslims the first part was basic iman and shirk and amal saleh all these things which were very basic these are actually are the subjects which are discussed in detail in the makki surahs here a brief you may say survey but now again to the muslims regarding the reformation of the society the rules of conduct now in the society wa yastaftuna ka fil nisa In the very first section of this surah, there were some commandments about women, about orphans, but there or arose into the minds of the people certain questions and doubts about those things. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is now explaining. People came to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to ask questions about it. What does it mean? How can we do it? Now these questions. Yes, taftunak fi nisa. O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they want a pronouncement about women. Tell them Allah is going to pronounce 
give you a pronouncement regarding women. وَمَا يُطْلَعَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الْكِتَابِ فِي يَتَامَ النِّسَاء And what has been already which is recited to you in the book about the orphan women. يَتَامَ النِّسَاء In the ayah number 3 of this very surah you know the mention was there. But people I told you the munkreen is sunnah who don't take sunnah to be the exegesis of Quran. To be the authentic or exegesis of Quran. They interpret it in different way. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blocked their way. He has made his commandment absolutely clear. That is the yataman nisa, the orphan girls. Allati la tutuna hunna ma kuteba lahunna. Wa targabuna antan kehu hunna. You want to marry them? They are under your guardianship. You want to marry them? Because they are orphans, you will not have to pay the dowry. And nobody will be there to ask for their rights. La tutu hunna ma katab Allahu lahunna. You don't want to pay to them what Allah subhanahu wa taala has fixed for them. Wa targabuna antan kehu hunna. And you want to marry them? Wal mustadafin amin al wildan. And you know. The oppressed people among the oppressed ones among the children, one takumu lil yatama bil kisp, and that you should establish justice about orphans. Now it is kama be an takumu lil yatama bil kisp, a kama be bil kisp with justice. So you have to establish justice. Wama tafalu min khairin fain Allah ka na bihi alima, and whatever good you do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very well knows it. Don't think it will go in vain or in waste. Now second issue. وَإِنِ مْرَاتٌ خَافَتْ مِنْ بَعْلِهَا نُشُوزًا In the beginning of the surah we discussed. If a husband feels that the wife is becoming disobedient. She is not behaving as she should. Then what to do? That was given in the beginning. Now the converse of it. Maybe that a woman thinks that the husband is cruel to him. He is not paying his du her due, her due attention. For example, after all, she is in wedlock with the person. She is the wife. He is the husband. She has some rights over her, over him, and he is not performing the duties. Wa in imratul khafat min baaleha nushuzan or irazan. If a woman fears from her Husband, no shuzan, that is oppression or cruelty, or irradan, or neglect, ignoring. Now he is ignoring her, not coming to her, not meeting her. So these things, you know, what should you do? Fala juna ha alayhi ma an yusliha baina huma sulha. There will be no blame on them if they fix some new terms between them. The woman can say, okay. I let you have part of the dowry that you paid to me, okay? But live with me in a in a maruf way, in a just justifiable way. So actually, anything a new treaty can be made. They can adjust the things between them so that they can live together, and they can live as real wife and husbands because that is the essence of the family life. What sulho khair? And you know, peace and treaty. This is much better, even if you have to give up something. Wa ozeratil alfuz shuk. Verily, these inner souls of man, the basic and the baser selves in man, there is you know greed in it. Woman will also say, "I don't want to forego the part of the dowry that you paid to me, but to make some some reconciliation, to make things better." If you can do it, you must do it. Why in tohsenu wa tattaku? But if you if you adopt a good attitude, and you have the regard of Allah, taqwa of Allah, you are God conscious, you are Allah conscious, you have Allah in your mind, tattaku, and you are trying to save yourself from Allah's displeasure. Fain Allah ka na bima ta maluna khabira. So whatever you are doing, Allah is very well aware of it. Walan tasatiru third, because it was said in the beginning, if you want to have more than one wife, you have to be 
to do full justice between them. All the things that can be measured or weighed must be given equally. Your time equal. The time you are passing with this wife must be equal to the time you are passing with that wife. The money that you are giving to this wife, the equal sum must be paid to the other wife. The dress, what type of dress you are providing to them, you have to provide here also. All the things that can be weighed and measured. But you know, there is one thing which is not in the control of man. And that is his heart. He might have love for one more than the other. And this is beyond the control of human beings. So that is now made clear here. وَلَن تَسْتَطِيعُ أَن تَعْدِلُ بَيْنَ النِّسَاءِ وَلَوْ حَرَسْتُمْ And it is impossible for you in this respect to do justice to the women. Although you might be eager to do that, but you can't do it. فَلَا تَمِيلُوا كُلَّ الْمَيْلِ But don't incline towards one absolutely. فَتَذَرُوهَا كَالْمُعَلَّقَةً So as to leave the other one as suspended in between. She is neither married. Nor, you know, without, nor with a husband, or neither without a husband. This is muallak, hanging in between. Don't leave her in suspense. You have gone to one side only, and the other wife is now muallak. Wal tadaruha kal muallaka. Wa in tuslihu wa tattaqu fa inna Allah kana ghafur rahima. And if you make amendments, make amend your ways. And number two, if you have real taqwa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever forgiving and ever merciful. وَإِيَّةَ فَرَّقَى Number four. You know talaq, separation. أَبْغَضُ الْحَلَالِ There's a hadith the Prophet said. إِنَّ أَبْغَضَ الْحَلَالِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ الْتَلَاقُ The worst among the halal things. The most hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it is halal. Although it is halal, it is very hateful in the eyes of Allah. أَبْغَضُ الْحَلَالِ إِنْدَ اللَّهِ الْتَلَاقُ But if a wife and a husband, they are not living properly. They have tried all the means to reconcile to each other. But you know, they have absolutely different temperaments, different priorities. So they can't, they are incompatible, so to say, with each other. So now it's no use keeping them together. The, the house, you know, the family will not have the peace. Which is required. That love. Which is required. So actually then it is better to separate. This ayah is encouraging separation and divorce. Please note it. And this is the balance in divine law. Something is very bad. Very bad. Very bad. But permissible. And in certain condition it becomes desirable. You must try your best. To maintain this relationship of marriage. But if you know. After all the methods that you have tried of reconciliation, you have failed. That is better to separate. وَإِنْ يَتَفَرَّقَ And if they separate, يُغْنِ اللَّهُ كُلَّمْ مِنْ سَعَتِهِ Allah will provide each one from his abundance. Now maybe that Allah gives this woman a better husband with whom he can, she can live in a better way. And Allah will provide to this male also, to this, to this husband also a better wife. Which is more compatible in her manners and ways with this, with this person. So that is, If they decide to separate, يُغْنِ اللَّهُ كُلَّمْ مِنْ سَعَاتِهِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ وَاسِعًا حَكِيمًا And Allah is all accommodating. Allah's treasures, they are not limited. He can produce... A better wife for you. Provide a better wife for you and a better husband for her. Kaan Allah waasyan alima and hakima and he is all wise. Walillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi lard. Again, you must know everything belongs to him, not to you, not to anybody else. To Allah belongs everything. All the things which are in the heavens or in the earth. Walakal wasayna al-lazina utul kitabi min qablikum. And we had advised and admonished those also who were given the book before you, O Muslims, وَإِيَّاكُمْ And we are advising you also, أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ That have taqwa of Allah. You know, all these rules and regulations and do's and don'ts will go in vain if there is no taqwa. 
man man will play with the rules this happens law you know can be made an article of play a game but if you have real taqwa then these instructions will be beneficial see the wordings walillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard wa laqad wasayna alladhina utu al-kitaba min qablikum wa iyyakum an ittaqu llah we advise them also and we are advising you also they were the former muslim ummah and now you are the muslim ummah they were the representatives of allah on earth and now you are occupying the same position so we admonish them also and we are admonishing you also an ittaqu llah wa in takfuru fa inna lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard now here kufr doesn't mean unbelieving here kufr is as opposed to shukr if you act thanklessly we have given you this position if you are not grateful or if you disregard allah subhanahu wa taala fa inna lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al ard what harm can you do to allah by disregarding him or disregarding his laws and of sharia to him belongs all the things which are in the heavens and in the in the earth wa kana allah ghaniyan hamida and allah subhanahu wa taala is self sufficient he needs none he needs nothing wa hamida hamida he is praiseworthy he doesn't need any praise he is the praised one himself walillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard you are seeing how many times these words have been repeated here lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard don't think that you own something and you have the authority and if a woman is there in the in you know this wedlock with you now you can do anything to her that you like no you are also bound man to allah you will be held responsible on the day of judgment if there is any ill treatment from your side to your wives to the orphans or to the weaker elements of the society don't think you will go scot free you will have to you know face the grand accountability of the day of judgment walillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard wa kafa billahi wakila in yasha yuzhibkum ayyuhan nas if allah pleases he can finish you o mankind wa yaati bi akhirin he can bring another creation he created you he can create any other creation don't think that the creative activity of allah has come to an end now he cannot create any other creature although he has raised you to a very high pinnacle very high position ashraful makhluqat wa laqad karramna bani adam wa hamalnahum fil barr wal bahr wa razaqnahum min at-tayyibat wa faddalnahum ala kasirin mimman khalaqna tafdila we have given you all that positions but don't think we can finish with you all of you and we can bring another creation wa yasha yuzhib ka ayyuha an-nas wa yati bi akhirin wa kana allah ala zalika qadira allah is verily allah is powerful enough to do it man kana yuridu sawab ad-dunya fa inda allah sawab ad-dunya wal akhirah very beautiful whosoever has decided only to get the reward in this world woe to him allah subhanahu wa taala has both the things the reward of this world also and akhirah also tu hi nada chand kaliyon par qanaat kar gaya warna gulshan mein ilaaj e tangi e dama bhi tha you have limited yourself to this world the gains of this world the comforts of this world the luxuries of this world the fame of this world the power of this world and there is nothing as compared to akhirah ومل حياة الدنيا في الآخرة إلا قليل. so it's a very beautiful way of exhortation. why have you confined yourself؟ من كان يريد سواب الدنيا فإن الله سواب الدنيا والآخرة. وكان الله سميع بصيرا. and verily Allah سبحانه وتعالى is ever listening, ever seeing. nothing is hidden from his eyes now the last ayah is very profound here you know this section is ending the address to the muslims 
Again, we shall find the address towards Munafiqun from ayah number 136. But this ayah is most profound. This discourse addressed to the Muslims ending with this ayah. Ya yuhalladheena amanu koonu qawwameena bil qist shuhada lillah. Oh, you who profess to believe. Oh, you who believe. Stand up for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qawwameena bil qist. Qama be, I said. To establish something. Qawwameena bil qist. Establishing justice in this world. Just social order to be established. All types of injustice and cruelty and exploitation to be done away with. And this is your duty. We have made you the best ummah. Ya ayyuhal ladheen amanu. Koonu qawwameena bil qist shuhada lillah. You should become witnesses for, for Allah. You know Jehovah's witnesses. A very good term. Jehovah. This is the name for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Witnesses of Allah. And actually we are the witnesses for Allah. Shuhada linnas. Wa kazalika ja'alnaakum ummatan wasatal. لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَا عَلَى النَّاسِ وَتَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا To be witnesses for Allah. Now witness you know. Very beautiful. Please understand. Whenever you are testifying in any case, in any dispute, your testimony is going against one party in favor of the other party. Or against this party, then naturality is in favor of the other, against the other. So we have with witness either Lam or Allah. Shahida Lahu. He testified in his favor. Shahida Alayhi. He testified against him. Shahida Lahu or Shahida Alayhi. Just as we have in a hadith, Al Quran Hujjatul Laka or Alayka. This Quran is an argument either in your favor or against you. Either it will intercede before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, this bond man of yours loved me much. He read me. He pondered over me. He acted upon me. So accept my intercession for him. It is for you. And it can be against also. Oh Allah, this fellow, he professed that I am the book of Allah. He never read me. Or recited me without understanding. Even a newspaper he was not reading without understanding. But he was reciting me without understanding. So it will be a witness against you. Al Quran Hujjatun Laka Walek. But we shall continue this discourse in the next session, inshallah. Aqulu qali hada wa staqfurullah li wa lakum wa lisa'iril muslimin wal muslimat.